So welcome to our video on the causes of the Industrial Revolution, which begins Unit 4. So the first thing you're going to need to do in your notebook is make a new title page for Unit 4. And then I'll give you the notes um, later for the right side if I haven't yet. And your left side is going to be a graphic organizer today. So you want to set up three columns, and they're going to be geographic, political, and economic columns, which will explain their, those causes of the Industrial Revolution. And keep in mind that we're talking about the English Industrial Revolution right now because the American Industrial Revolution starts actually differently. So gray, that's usually what people think of when they think of the Industrial Revolution. What was it? Um, well, let's go over some of the causes today. So the first thing to know is to think about revolutions. Okay, we went over the scientific revolution and the Enlightenment Revolution, which changed the way people thought. Then the French and the Haitian Revolution, which were political revolutions. Well, this is a revolution of material things, or basically what we like to call stuff. The stuff people had, the stuff people bought, how much stuff people had, how this stuff was made, okay? And in order for this to happen, there first had to be an agricultural revolution. And there actually were several agricultural revolutions in history, but the one right prior to this had a few um, key important features. For one thing, there was new inventions like the seed drill. So instead of planting seeds, you know, one at a time, which would take a long time, they did it much faster. Also, they would rotate crops. So suppose if a farmer had three fields, and one he always grew wheat, one he always grew barley, and one he always grew hay in, eventually, year after year, growing the same thing, that um, depletes the soil of its um, nutrients. And they realized if you rotate the different crops every year and actually leave some barren uh, every maybe say three seasons. Um, it depletes the soil less so your food gets bigger and then that means that there's more food and your animals have more food so then your animals produce more manure and that's important because that's used as fertilizer I know this is hard to see so that there's more um, food for people to eat then. Okay so also they figured out how to make animals bigger to fertilize more fields um, England, for example, didn't have many big cows. They had mostly sheep, and they were only about 28 pounds back then. That wasn't enough fertilizer. So this was important. Okay, now, when you have these things going on, especially these inventions, you don't need all these people working on the fields anymore. If a machine can plant seeds fastly, why do you need a dozen people doing it, right? So now, if these people aren't needed on the farm, what do they do, right? They're now open to other things. Like I said, Keep in mind the difference between England and America, because America did this a little bit differently. So now the people said, all right, well, I need to find, you know, um, a new place to work. The other situation was that there were more people, because as there's more food, people live longer. They don't die of diseases often. They survive infancy more, and they also live longer lives. Now, historians debate how much the population actually changed, because there weren't figures that give exact population numbers before. There wasn't a census in England, for example, until 1801. In 1753, they actually voted it down, saying, you know, this is encroaching on people's liberties, you know, recording them and stuff. Um, but they guesstimated the populations based on baptismal, baptismal and burial records. Okay, so now we have society changing. And many of these peoples weren't needed on the farm anymore, so many of them went to live in cities, especially the manufacturing cities of England in uh, Worcestershire and uh, Northamptonshire and Lancashire. Um, and some of these cities increased by like 78%. Okay, now we have a geographic cause. England was once covered with trees, right? Think Sherwood Forest. But by this point, now they're gone because they were already used for resources. But England, especially in the two northern counties, had lots of uh, coal. And they realized that if you burn this coal, you can produce steam, and that could be used as energy. Uh, in 1709, the Coalbrookdale Works um, were established in England, and that started a long precedent of coal mining there. In fact, the Duke of Bridgewater set up many coal mines, anywhere from seven miles long to eventually 21 miles long. That's pretty amazing, right? And iron became important as well, but um, coal was the first one. All right now we have some political causes. Prior to this, England had some civil wars and glorious revolutions, you hear. But now there was a stable government in England, and they pretty much stayed away from what business was doing. Hey, government, uh, we're not going to you know, bother you, Mr. Businessman. Um, and so the economy began to flourish. And people also now had 
extra money, money that they did not need to spend on food, money that they did not need to spend on rent. They could spend it on some, I don't know, fancy pair of socks because everyone wants a fancy pair of socks. And there was also a free trade going on throughout England. Remember, England had lots of colonies, so they could sell um, their goods to all these markets. And um, they also had capital, which meant money that you can invest, right, like buy a new machine to make even more money. All right, so that's where we're going to leave off for now. Next class, we're going to learn about why it began in England, and we'll have some more facts for you. All right, so today's password is 28-pound sheep. It's three words, 28-pound sheep. All right, see you next class.